it's Gabrielle, and this video is a sample from StudyClicks Boost, our new rapid revision tool. Go to studyclicks.ie forward slash boost to find out more. Hiya folks, what have we got in store? Difficult wee question ahead. But, bit of practice, be no mother to use. Um, so find the equation of a circle, passes through them two points, and where a line is a tangent at one of those points. So, it looks a bit wordy, a bit confusing. What I like is a little sketch. Nothing swanky, just a sketch of what's happening. What's occurring, as Nessa says. So throw in your points anywhere. Throw them in randomly, doesn't matter. So there's my two points on the circle. And this one here, a line is a tangent at the point. So when it says a tangent, it means a line that touches the circle or touches the graph at one point only. Now, without using a ruler, that's not a bad straight line. And there it is there. So at the point minus 3 minus 2, we have a tangent going on. Now, on page 19, they give us the equation of a circle, the general equation of a circle, x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to 0. This bit below, which it tells you in the formula book as well, stands for my center, and the bottom bit stands for my radius. Now, if it points on a circle or points on a line, the go-to method is sub it in, since it satisfies the equation of a line. So I'm going to sub in my point 0, 1, into this top formula here, the equation of a circle, since that point is on the circle. Now, how do we label our points? X and Y. Throw them into that formula up the top, and instead of my X, I'm subbing in 0. Instead of my Y, I'm subbing in minus 1. And then put a box around that, put a cloud, and that's going to be my equation A. 1 minus 2F plus C is equal to 0. Repeat that process for the other point, minus 3 minus 2, label it as we do, and throw it into the equation of a circle since it's on the circle. I just sped things up, instead of saying x squared, I did minus 3 squared. And there's my equation b. I brought over the 13 that was on the left, over the other side, made it a minus 13. Now this is the difficult bit. You could sub in that point, minus 3, minus 2, onto the purple line there, y is equal to 2x minus 4, and all you'll get is minus 2 is equal to minus 2. That'll work out because it's on the equation of a line. It's not going to give you any other equation in terms of g, f, and c, which is ideally what we want, because we're teeing it up for like a triple simultaneous equation. Now there's one thing you've got to know. A line perpendicular to a tangent contains the center. So a line perpendicular to the tangent contains the center. And the center, when we're using this equation, x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to zero, is written in the form minus g minus f. Now, we want to sub in minus g minus f into a line. Now, I can't just sub it into y is equal to 2x plus 4 because it's not on that purple line. So what I must do is find the equation of this perpendicular line, which contains the center, or find the equation of the yellow line that I have here. So, two things we need for the equation of a line. We need a slope and a point. I've got my point, minus 3, minus 2. I just need to get the slope. Now, it's not going to be the same slope as y is equal to 2x plus 4. It's going to be perpendicular to that. And if we have this equation in the form y is equal to mx plus c, we can see the slope of that purple line is 2. Or I'll write it as 2 over 1 because I want to get the perpendicular slope and it makes that wee bit easier. So the perpendicular slope to that is we turn it upside down or invert it and change the sign. So the slope of that perpendicular line is minus a half. Now we'll find the equation of that perpendicular line by using this slope here, minus a half, and this point here, minus 3, minus 2, since it's on the line. Label your point, x1, y1, and your slope is m. And then throw it into your formula for the equation of a line that's on page 18, y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Tidy it up, bring that 2 across in front, and then tidy it up whatever way you wish. And we have x plus 2y is equal to minus 7. Now, the important thing with this line is that it contains the center. And remember, the center is minus g minus f. Label it. 
x and y and then throw it in to this here perpendicular equation of a line. Tidy that up for ourselves and that's our third equation. Let's call it equation C. Now what I like from this is I can work out what G is. I can work out what G is by just simply moving G to the other side and what I get is 7 minus 2F is equal to G. Now the beauty of that is that I can sub it into equation B and then I'm going to have two equations in terms of F and C. Ugh, that's even hard saying it. So I'm going to mosey him up there into equation B and you'll see the idea in doing this. Put another box or a cloud or double underline it, whatever you wish. And now I can put this new pimped up equation with A because they're both in terms of F and C. And we have a normal double simultaneous equation. So when I put A just in below this, what I've got to do is cancel out my C's by multiplying that bottom line by minus 1. Same number of C's, different signs. Adios amigos. F is equal to 3. Now work out our C by subbing this in. C is equal to 5. We'll not get cocky. Take our time. Take our time. And then to work out G, we have it over here. G is equal to, how we say up here, 1. Now, if asked for the equation of the circle, we've got our G, F, and C. I'm just going to sub them back into this equation. And lo and behold, there she is in all her might, the equation of a circle. Now, there's a lot going on in that. As I say, the thing that you must remember is a line perpendicular to a tangent contains a center. Um, because if we just subbed it in otherwise, we would have ended up with minus 2 is equal to minus 2 had a dead end.